Welcome to the FNO InsureTech Podcast, a place where movers and shakers from all points within the insurance ecosystem gather and discuss all things InsureTech. Here are your hosts, Lee Boyd and Rob Beller. Hey, all of you crazy kids out there in podcast world. It's us again, the FNO InsureTech guys coming to you with this week's episode of FNO InsureTech. The one, the only podcast in the world. What if there was only one podcast in the whole world? And it was oh, just one. one. Just one. This is us. This is the mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah. Uh, we would have more listeners. We would. I, would we, though? <laughs> I don't know. Or I don't or know. I think they'd say, you know. Uh, no, no. I, I don't, I don't That's know. That's a that, podcast? I'm I think out. the only way we're going to get more listeners is if we change the hosts, mm-hmm. one, two, we change Wait, the one content. host or is that point hosts. one? Hosts, either, either or both. Oh, okay. Okay. Or, or the other thing is the content. I don't think people listen just for the host. I think they listen for the content, for the, for the knowledge for the that they can gain. Yeah. We're in the way of the stuff that people want to listen to. So in other words, less is more. If we talk less, that's better. No one ever writes us and says, I wish we had more Robin Lee. No, but people say we love the banter. We hear that. People like that. People do say that. But I mean, obviously nobody writes us anyway, so. That's not true. JJ writes us. JJ wrote us. I didn't write JJ back. Hey, JJ. How are you, man? That's maybe that's one of the reasons why people don't write to us. <laughs> I don't write them back because you never respond. That's well, okay. I take it on as my task. Well, I appreciate you doing that because then the day goes by. I'm like, well, I didn't respond yesterday, and then it's like, you know, I'm late to the party, and it's a whole mental thing. Um, today's podcast is one of those things, one of those places where we just need to get out of the way. Yeah, we need to let the professional come in and talk. The yeah, and and we're we're gonna get into su- some cybersecurity stuff today. Mm-hmm. That um will, uh, well, I'll tell you what it did for me. It opened my mind up about you think cybersecurity and cyber um, insurance, etc., and all things around that are complex and complicated. You are correct. You you are correct. You are correct. We we get to talk all about uh, all about that today, and then we get to veer a little bit into the insurance world and how the how how this company is also working with cyber insurance and all the aspects there. We have Scott Canry, the co-founder and CEO at Axio, which is a name that I know many of you have heard. We asked him, and unfortunately, we didn't record it, but we asked him, are you an insure tech or not? And he had a very nuanced and, um, and uh, detailed answer about that. But they're absolutely a company that is functioning importantly in the cyber insurance world mm-hmm. um, and, inf- and deeply, influential, deeply influential in cyber insurance and how cyber insurance um, can be adopted and used as well as just all things around cyber for, for, uh, for corporations today. Yeah. I, you know, I think, I think we should take our own advice, hop out of our way and let Scott come in and talk all about that. Great idea. Great idea. So as we like to say, without further ado, here is our interview with Scott Canry, co-founder, CEO at Axio. Hey, everybody. We are here with our guest coming to us today from, where are you, Scott? Swarthmore, Pennsylvania. Today of course. Only. I was about to guess that. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the places. Isn't there a, isn't there a Swarthmore college? Isn't that like, is that where it is? There is. It's, it's, it's not too far from here. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm happen to be calling you from the third floor, uh, bedroom of one of my best friends, uh, houses. 
Okay. Well, Do you live there or or no 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 I, I live visiting. in the western suburbs of Chicago. I'm visiting today. Okay. Um, Very and nice. uh, and then tomorrow I'll be in New York. So. Very wow, nice. well, look at you. Very Going nice. Going in on, yeah. a, on a visit day. That's nice. We, we have Scott Canry here with us today, the, the CEO and co-founder of Axio. Uh, very exciting for us to have you with us. Welcome welcome to our podcast. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Lee. appreciate being here and spending some time with you from the third floor bedroom of my friend's house from Smarthmore, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's so fantastic. That, isn't that like a very fine liberal arts college? Did I get that right? I think so. I'll, I, I can visit tonight okay. and tell you tomorrow morning. Uh, th th don't worry. I never if, heard of it. If you so. don't get the answer right, there's no there's no <laughs> consequences. So, um, none. Okay. Well, exactly. let's jump in. You are um, the CEO of Axio. Uh, for those uh, people on our podcast who don't know what that is, and we've been we've been before we started today, we've been talking about what Axio is, and you'll find. Um, as we get deeper into this, that it is um, doesn't fit in a neat little tight little box, which is really interesting. And so why don't you give us a minute on what Axio is and, and what you guys do? Sure. Uh, per perfect place to, to jump in. And, and again, thank you so much for having me today. Sure. So let me give you two perspectives to answer that, and then we can kind of take it wherever. So fundamentally, what we're trying to do at Axio is solve the business challenge of, of cybersecurity. And what I mean by that is that over the past couple of years, because of a variety of factors, a lot of which we're going to talk about today, it has become abundantly clear and undeniable that the challenge of cybersecurity is evolving from what was historically believed to be a technical problem that was uh, entirely focused on technical solutions to a business and a risk problem that within a corporate enterprise or an organization really ought to sit on the same plane and level as other key corporate or enterprise imperatives, such as financial management, reporting, workforce, you know, you name it. So um, not, not, a, a lot not, to, not a, not a, a, a department underneath a department. If you correct, will. correct. Mm -hmm. A, a, absolutely. And, you know, in part and parcel to that um, underscores the rise of the security leader, for example, to potentially be on par. And we agree with this as, you know, CFO, general counsel, chief operating officer. Um, so that that level, you know, within the organization. And, and obviously that's a lot to unpack and we'll get into it. Where the company started at a very, very tactical level, as I often describe it, is is really a function of mine and my co-founders backgrounds. Very, very quickly, I grew up in the insurance industry, worked for Aon for 10 years. I was on the team that sold cyber insurance. Okay. My co-founder, David White, worked for and led a team at the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University, authoring and writing risk management and cybersecurity methodologies, meaning technical playbooks for security leaders. And if you think about where we came from in our prior lives, Dave helped CISOs understand what's the next best piece of tech you want to deploy to protect against something from happening. And I, on the other hand, sold insurance to the enterprise that said, you know what, despite our best efforts on the, the technology side of things, if something still happens to us, we would like insurance to pay for that loss. And if you think about those two things and everything else that goes into a cybersecurity strategy, uh, like I said a minute ago, a minute ago, employee training and awareness, supplier selection, legal and regulatory compliance, an overall cybersecurity strategy in a program consists of all of that stuff. And when Dave and I got together for the first time, and I, this is the, the ultimate embodiment of Axio, we, we really centered what we wanted to focus on and ultimately what we've now created as a means of methodology, a software platform for companies to put all of those pieces of the puzzle together have a better view of what the risk means to the enterprise, have a better vantage point on what's the best combination of things to do. And oftentimes I'll boil it down as far as kind of the notional CFO debate about where do I invest my last dollar if I have one more dollar to spend? Do I give it to the CISO to buy a firewall? Do I give it to the risk manager to buy more cyber insurance? Do I give it to the legal folks to comply with some regulation that might be forthcoming? You know, on and on and on. 
that's the problem that, that we're solving. And to go back to that financial management reporting analogy that I talked about before, if you think about it in the context of a means to understand all of these disparate points, a platform to institutionalize it within the organization, and ultimately a way to take the problem from, again, that historical technical problem to a risk and a business problem, that's what we're all about. Because I, I would think that one of the things you're, you're sitting in a conference room talking about this, where, like you're saying on your last dollar, where do you start? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so multifaceted, right? It's not just right. how good is your tech stack, right? but, but how good are your people at using it? Right. How porous are they, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. And, and, and increasingly in today's day and age when, you know, I, I will be the, the millionth person or the billionth person to say, you know, cybersecurity in today's day and age is not if, but when, mm -hmm. you know, companies need to invest a sufficient amount of time and effort into the, the notion of, well, when something does happen to us, we need to mitigate the impact as much as we possibly can, and we need to recover from it as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And, and that's an entirely different set of considerations, or at least a meaningfully different set of considerations from just layer on more tech to protect the, to protect the possibility that ever happens to begin with, to accepting the reality that something will happen to us at some point in time. So let's figure out what those things are what they can look like, how they're going to manifest themselves, what they're going to cost. And let's, let's get ahead of what it's going to take to recover and rebuild as quickly as possible. But really at the end of the day, I mean, that's just, that's the world of risk. Bad things happen. Events happen. Buildings burn down yeah. and no, no, no company went out of business because of a fire. You know what to expect. You know how to get ahead of it and, and how to mitigate from it and life goes out. And that's right. what we're trying to do for the, the risk of cybersecurity. Right. I mean, if you knew you were never going to have a fire at your house, you would not need to protect against that, right? But as we I all know, none of us can say that. Right. And so, so what you're saying is, is that, is that uh, basically every enterprise should have that kind of perspective. Yes, this very well could happen here. And, 100%. Right. And, and I, I, you know, I'm just thinking, I think every company says that right every company goes out there and says yeah we are doing what we can but are, are are you finding that companies can do a lot more than they are today or or even when they sell when whenever they look at their at them at themselves you can come in with another eye a deeper look and say hey these are all the things you didn't see talk talk to me a little bit about that well i think that's a that's a really great point because there's been an interesting trend of late and granted it's a little bit more on the, the larger enterprise, more progressive CISO side of the equation. But over the last couple of months, probably tw uh, 12 months, 18 months or so, we've started to encounter uh, more security leaders and in an organizational perspective that has, that has been grounded in the notion of maybe we've done too much maybe for the past five years because all we've done or most of what we've done is just layer on more protective tech all of the time every year give me more budget let me put up let me try to build the wall higher you know you, you name it maybe we've sacrificed understanding where the risk really really lies and instead just tried to build this you know, notional impenetrable fortress around it all versus recognizing that we can achieve a better cybersecurity outcome if we're more focused, we're simpler. We, we know what the ultimate value drivers of the business are. We're going to be overweight there. And then on top of it, like I said before, we're going to start to prioritize or at least equally weight knowing that despite our best efforts, uh, that if we know what the adverse outcomes are and can better prepare for them, what they'll cost, how they'll actually happen, we can ultimately achieve a better cybersecurity program by 
balancing or, or optimizing kind of the portfolio of, of everything. Also, in, also candidly to include, you know, insurance as, uh, as, as a loss control and, you know, pay for the event if it happens mechanism. And to go back to what you said, Lee, it, it's actually not a matter of doing more. I, I think more can potentially be perilous. I think it's, and this is really core to Axio, it, it's a matter of understanding better, being more effective, using resources more wisely, and ultimately putting together a better combination of things and having a framework to continually evolve it as the world quickly evolves to achieve that better outcome than just building the wall as high as possible because ultimately somebody's going to get through at some point. Yeah, and, and that's what I was just sitting here thinking. You are, you're solving a problem that might not even exist yet. I mean, it's not like keeping a dog in, in, in a yard. You build a fence, the dog's in the yard. But you're, you're having to keep people out, keep, keep systems out in things that maybe aren't even created yet. I mean, talk to me a little bit about, about the, the research you do, about how do you try to solve those problems that you don't even know are problems yet. Well, so actually a lot of what, where, where I think we're really, really unique in the marketplace is that, um, in terms of just how the, how the Axiom methodology works, how the software platform works, how, for example, our implementation processes work, you know, you name it. We help clients kind of imagine what otherwise would have been unimaginable, um, as far as let's shift the conversation again from building the wall as high as possible to assuming that somebody's getting in and therefore let's spend the time and effort on figuring out what is that representative set um, of adverse outcomes that can happen to me. And, and that's an, actually, that's an understandable universe. And actually when, when, when it comes to the, the types of companies that we're more successful with larger, more complex industrials. Um, you know, energy manufacturing, utility, um, healthcare service, you know, you name it. Your, your loss profile is a function of who you are as a business, how you use technology. You know where revenue comes from. You know what the most profitable divisions are. You know how much money somebody in treasury can wire without three checks and balances. You, you know from other areas of risk what are the bad things that can happen to you? And if you think about it from that frame, the otherwise kind of nefarious infinite, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What new threat, you know, uh, vector is going to be uncovered. What piece of malware is going to rear itself into the marketplace to, Hey, based on who I am, what I do, how I use technology, here's the, here's the three, here's the six, here's the nine types of cybersecurity events that can happen to me because my world's finite in that respect. Here's who I am as a business. Here's how I use technology. Now let's understand that. Now let's work that back to the enabling technologies and capabilities that we have that actually underpin our business. Let's work it back even further to the cybersecurity processes, technologies that are in place to protect those. And then let's certainly bring in kind of the latest threats and everything else. But now all of a sudden, understanding and framing the problem by starting in the business side of things and working back creates a, a manageable and understandable means to attack the problem versus not sleeping because you don't know what piece right. of malware is coming out tomorrow and how it's right. going to affect you. Right. Instead of constantly worrying about what you don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. It makes a lot of sense. Uh -huh. And starting with what you do. And so from a process and a product standpoint, you guys provide a, a kind of a, um, a, a technology and a, a platform and a, um, a consultancy to use it. Is that correct? Ha, ha, tell, tell us about your product. All, all of the above, depending on the mix. I mean, fundamentally, what, what um, I, I think I had said it before, but it's not, you know, we... we I, I like to analogize what we do um, to financial management reporting in the sense that uh, so much and, 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 and a great amount of the value that comes from us um, is the, the methodological approach, which speaks to the quantitative part of the problem, which is what's my risk in financial terms and dollars and cents? What are those adverse outcomes? The, quanti uh, or the, the qualitative 
side of the equation, which is how strong and how mature is my cybersecurity program? What are those two views side by side? Meaning, for example, is the strength of my cybersecurity program aligned with my most significant areas of risk? Are the, the less strong areas of my cybersecurity program aligned with the less significant areas of risk? Or is my program upside down? Am I spending all the time and effort defending against the risk that I can contend with on a daily basis and I'm flying blind to the, the, the big events that would set me back, you know, meaningfully from a, from a business standpoint? Um, and, and therefore lies the elegance of kind of the quantitative and, and qualitative, if you look at it that way. In terms of the platform, the methodology, the services um, behind it for our core industries and where we have a lot of subscribers and where we've just, we've, we've focused historically, um, we have uh, subscribers that sign up, you know, daily, weekly, whatever, that it's, it's, is, is close to a plug and play solution as is possible. We have scenarios for you. We know what cybersecurity frameworks see. Spend a little time and effort uploading, you know, who you are and what you do into the platform and, and we can get you going for really large, really complex enterprises that might want to, um, you know, deploy us to five different operating entities that have different DNAs and, you know, functions and, and whatnot, um, that require a lot more, um, ingrainment within the enterprise. We've, we've got, uh, people that can help do that. And then. You know, especially when it comes to the emerging side of the equations, it's not uncommon for our clients to call us and say, we believe, or we've heard about something in our environment or in our sector, so to speak, or in our industry, um, in terms of a new potential attack vector or thread and, and this and that, and this might impact this technology. And that would, uh, lead to this, you know, uh, business unit being out of play for, for two weeks. Can you help us? think about what that, you know, emerging risk scenario or realistic, but yet to be seen scenario looks like, can we think through that with you? We continue to believe that the, the professional kind of high caliber perspective on things can be really, really useful. So depending on kind of who you are, um, how you want to deploy us, what your goals are, if you want the high caliber, or you just, you know, you, you want to take that step up in terms of how you manage your program. And we, we, we can serve them all. That, that's super interesting. I, and, and I can just sit here imagining the larger, more multifaceted an organization is, it becomes it, it, daunting to think about what, what am I, what, what am I protecting? What, where am I playing good defense and where am I not? Right. And some, some organizations are so big. The, the right hand defense might not know what the left hand defense is doing. Right. Coordinating all of that effectively is beyond a full time job. Uh, fascinating. And I'm sure that in most situations, even world class situations, there's holes. Of course. Well, think about it this way, too. And I'll give you just a real life example. So, one of our, our largest and most steadfast subscribers, and you can kind of play this analogy into different sectors and different types of businesses, is a, a large um, energy company in the United States. And they have a couple different unique, it's all energy, but relatively unique business, uh, uh, business or operating units. They have a nuclear division. They have a um, electricity distribution division. They have a natural gas distribution division and they have a renewables division, um, uh, wind farms and solar and, and so forth. And if you think about the cybersecurity exposure of, of each of those, they are very, very distinct. The cyber risk of the wind farms and the renewables division is more different than not to the nuclear division. And what this, this particular uh, client of ours, customer of ours has, has done from an overall corporate standpoint is that they've said, we can help each of the divisions in terms of the things that we can help you with. Shared IT, 
uh, confidential information, uh, customer, you know, information, um, e email, you know, y you name it, where all of you subscribe to shared services within the organization. We got that. We'll provide those resources. That's our loss. If it happens, you know, we'll take responsibility for that. On the other hand, if there is a cyber event that is uniquely, um, tied to you in terms of nuclear operations, uh, renewables operations, uh, electricity distribution operations, whatever. That's you. You own that. That's on your balance sheet. You figure out what your risk is, how much you need to invest in it. And, and at the end of the day, if the loss is from the shared stuff, again, that's us. If the loss is from you, that's mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, you, you've actually, the interesting dynamic here, and, and again, this is kind of a big bet of Axio and, and where the world's going, is that you've actually put ownership of the cybersecurity program in the hands of the business folks um, and, the, and those operational leaders and PL owners and, and so forth. And that's where they're raises the bar of the challenge from a technical problem with technical solutions to, you know what, like if I have a cybersecurity event this year and, and we have to foot the bill because it was ours, maybe I'm not getting a bonus. So let's think about right. it. Maybe I should buy some insurance. Right. Maybe I should right. figure out this other stuff. I'm not and, just going to tell my sister to keep putting up the wall. And this is, this is the, tr I, I would think the trend that you must be seeing and it must be happening within the, the whole industry that you work in. And that is, is moving it more from a technology problem, technology, the, 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 the C level technology person as, or even department, maybe more accurately, uh, running all of this there, because really they're a piece of the problem. But like you said, it's, this is past a technology problem. It's a business problem. And the consequences are a business problem, more so a business problem. And and then with, with that, with that, I want to add something I heard you say on another interview was about how you give visibility to the business side, to the board, to the CEO. You allow a quicker visibility into the risk. So if something goes on and they need to know, they can get answers way quicker than if it's just an internal uh, system. Is, is that right? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it has to do with just with, you know, with, with the language, with the insights, with, with, with the fundamental perspective that really hits home what I was talking about in terms of the quantitative perspective, what's my risk in dollars and cents, where am I in, or whichever currency you trade in, um, where am I investing from a cybersecurity standpoint? Are my investments appropriately aligned with, with the largest areas of, of risk? And this is where, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, historically speaking, in terms of kind of board reporting, board collaboration, everybody had their different kind of style and means about it. But there's um, there's no doubt that even very very specifically, historically speaking, like heat maps, for example, were were very very commonly used in many organizations. They still are used. So it's supposed to go into boards and say, "Here's my." 10 by 10 matrix in terms of the things that we're doing or the areas that we're protecting against. Um, great news. 82 of them are green, 10 of them are yellow and eight, eight are red. And over the next quarter, I need X amount of money because I'm going to turn, you know, eight of those red boxes, or I'm going to turn four of those red boxes to yellows and I'm going to turn five of those yellow boxes to green. The board would say, okay, that, that's great. We want to see, we want to see more green boxes. Yeah, that's not good. standing the test of time anymore. <laughs> now, like, 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 like I've said, and, and where the world's going, and actually where where the rest of the risk world lies, which is you know a key point here, is that risk is understood in financial terms. It's in, 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 it's understood in terms of impact. So even just the mere language and the mere context to elevate that conversation from green, yellow, and red boxes to, and I'm just making up numbers uh, to for exa example's sake. Here's where we currently are. Our aggregate risk right now is $250 million. The $250 million is a function of these six things that can happen to us. Each of it has a different value. There's a million dollar event. There's a $5 million event. There's a $50 million event. There's whatever. Um, it, 
is, is that level of, of risk acceptable to the organization? And the board might say, yep, it is. Keep it under that. And how are we going to keep it under that? Or they might say, no, it's not. Our organizational risk tolerance is $150 million. So what are you going to do over the next quarter, next two quarters to take us from 250 to 100? And instead of, I'm going to change some colors on boxes, the answer then becomes, here's exactly what I'm going to do. I have three controls that I want to deploy this quarter. I have three processes I'm going to change over the next five months. I'm already in conversation with my risk manager. We're going to increase our insurance limit from $50 million to $100 million. Here's what all of that's going to cost. And when I come back to you in November, if everything goes according to plan, I'm going to show you the net effect of all of that. And based on my projections and uh, how, how this looks like it's going to happen, I'm going to come back to you and tell you that our cyber risk is $125 million. Again, example, examples for, for illustration's sake. Right. That's where the conversation and this need is, is evolving to. Wow. Whole, whole different level than I even really realized. Yeah. Yeah. It's whole, it's holistic. It's not, uh, it's not red, yellow, green. Yeah. Right. It, 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 yeah. yeah. I do want to ask, I, I, so, so preventing, right. Preventing is super important. Dealing with, with attacks is very important. And then, and then you have the insurance side, right? You have yeah. the cyber yeah. insurance. And I'm just wondering how does Axio work with the cyber insurance do you have anything that you're working with cyber insurance companies or your work with companies can it help get better insurance or better rates is there any correlation there so um all of the above and we okay. can that's back, great back or, or, or go into each one and and let, and let me start by by saying this just as kind of a you know a foundational piece it has been a core thread and component of, of Axio since the very beginning. And in fact, since the very uh, first meeting when, when Dave and I met each other, that in our minds and based on everything that we're about, we think that there needs to be a necessary harmony between, call it the cybersecurity side of the equation and the risk and the insurance side of the equation. And what I mean by that is that if you just think about the the, the functionality of cybersecurity technology and insurance on a unique basis. Technology is infallible. It is absolutely impossible to eliminate the risk entirely by just putting up um, mm -hmm. the biggest wall in, in, in the world. It, it, to anybody that challenges me on that, let's, let's have it out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say, actually, that the insurance, uh, that the current insurance world, as we'll start to get into for a couple minutes, is is perfect. Um, however, one of the things that that we've had is kind of an exemplar artifact and just something that we, um, you know, put in in, in front of uh, customers and and, uh, and and prospects to to visualize the notion is <clears throat> is is a diminishing returns curve that basically depicts the, 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 the combined utility of technology and insurance on a combined basis. Meaning at some point in time, once you start your cybersecurity journey, you, you do the fundamentals. You, um, <clears throat> you put passwords in place, you encrypt your endpoints, you put multi-factor authentication in place, like all the stuff that um, any CISO would say, this is absolute table stakes. And then you do more. You can only get your risk curve or that level of risk down to an amount that's higher than the x-axis on our graphical depiction. Because again, technology is infallible. You can't build an impenetrable one. At that point, in a theoretical perfect insurability world, you could get the risk down to zero if the insurance industry was willing to say, I will take all of your residual risk. Mm -hmm. I am as confident in you as confidence exists. And therefore I'm going to take all of your residual risk. Well, now, you know what, through the combination of technology, everything else in the mix, 
an effective insurance purchase or a perfect insurance purchase, that company has zero cybersecurity risk. Well, that's not exactly how it works in reality because the insurance world's still got a long way to go before all of the, the risk in the world can be insured. But the point is that's a theory underpinning what we do. Now to go back to your question, Lee, as far as who we work with and how does it work, all of the above. We have companies that were existing ex were in our existing Axios subscribers that have very, very successfully utilized their usage of Axio, the insights that they make decisions on because of Axio to uh, convince their insurers that they better understand and are better managing this problem. And as a result, the ins their cyber insurance partners have given them better deals, lighter coverage, more effective premiums, an easier transaction process. We work with insurers who, who might get clients who aren't, or prospective clients who aren't Axio subscribers who come to like Lloyd's of London, for example, that we'll talk about yeah. and say, I, I am, I, I am who I am and here's how I use technology. And I am keen to ensure this, this, this large challenging risk. Can, can you do that for me? And certain insurers will say, we're receptive, but you got to prove it to us. And we need better information for, for underwriting. If you start to work with Axio, yes, um, we're, we're receptive to going in that journey with you. And we've delivered cover solutions there. We work with brokers who are increasingly seeing the value as oh, yeah. the facilitator of, of everything that I've mentioned. Um, so going back to your question again, we're working with, with all parties, you know, to, to help the insurance industry deliver better coverage outcomes, to help enterprises achieve better coverage outcomes, to help everybody in the chain, uh, achieve a more robust, fruitful, uh, less, less painful and kind of frictionless process, but all going back to that notion where I started a couple minutes ago of really, truly believing and recognizing that a, a cybersecurity instrument, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a cyber insurance instrument ought to just sit side by side to, to the cybersecurity stack in terms of another control capability, but it, but being a financial control. Is that something you came up with during your time uh, in the insurance space, or is that a, a new concept you've come up with? You know, I, so I, I, I would say that all, all, all I've done is, or all we've done is just recognize that uh, there ought to be a similar convergence between the cybersecurity and insurance industries as there is for every other area of risk. Every other area. To the, to the, to the property world and, you know, mm -hmm. you ask, you ask facilities managers and property risk managers, do, do you, do you collect, do, do you enjoy your relationship with the, your property insurer? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Like th th that, that's a big part of our, our strategy. Um, th the world of cyber has just taken a lot longer to evolve. And, and I think, uh, without getting, you know, too deep and going on a tangent, there's, uh, there's a variety of reasons for that, but, um. I think what we've basically done is just recognize that, hey, there's this um, continued convergence and um, harmonization that's happening between cybersecurity and the insurance industries that's natural because it's just the It's way so it natural. Is. I mean, it, it has is, to happen. You know, trying to facilitate it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's... like you said, that the, the insurance industry picks up part of this mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, a, a very uh, important part. Well, of of course, and the the the, the 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 reality of it too is that if you'd ask the if you ask, for example, John Neal from Lloyd's or Stefan Goling from Munich Re uh, and, and and various others, you know, CEOs and, and top uh, in insurance and, and brokerage leaders uh, around the world, most of them. I think rightfully it would say fundamentally the insurance industry's role is to understand and help the world navigate risk. And that manifests itself in risk transfer instruments, 
manifests itself in the process. It manifests itself in the information flow between enterprises and the insurance world. And, and if the insurance industry were to say, you know what, we're just not going to play ball with cyber, but yeah, can't understand it. Not willing to, to do it. Like, well, uh, just to be kind of blunt and curt, like what good is it? Oh, perfect. Right. If, if the insurance industry cannot come up with challenging as it is at times, and, and, and there's an ever, ever present journey of evolution and there's hand wringing about war exclusions and all sorts of stuff in the interim. But fundamentally speaking, if the insurance industry cannot in some way, shape or form look and contend with one of the greatest risk challenges, if not the greatest risk challenge of our generation, mm -hmm. what, 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 what good is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and there's just a necessary evolution and embracing that is happening right now. Uh, not going to solve itself overnight. We're proud to be part of that journey, but, uh, that, that, that has to happen. And I'm kind of thrilled that it will. I'm interested. Uh, I just want to touch on this quickly before we shift gears. Um, your, the origin story of Axio. Um, so you're an insurance guy on the production side, right? You're, you're basically, you're helping to sell insurance, uh, yeah. products. Um, at Aon and your co-founder is a tech guy. I, I, tell me how those worlds collided and, and it is what you're doing today. What, like eight or nine years later, the, the, uh, realization of what you guys were talking about, uh, when you first got together. Yeah. So, so let me go backwards. So, um, despite the fact that we've been at this for a little, little while, um, I, I, I confidently tell folks, whether it's you, know, you Rob and, and Lee or potential investors, existing investors, people in the marketplace, every single bet that, that Dave and I made and everybody else around us at this point with Anaxio, um, going back to the beginning has, has become true in terms of just the evolution of the challenge of, of cybersecurity. Um, and that ranges from. Uh, the involvement of an elevation of the issue to boards of directors, to regulatory, to the insurance industry, really having growing pains to, um, things, you know, bodies like the SEC going after security, which has happened now in the last year, you know, twice in the last 12 months, ultimately all, uh, underpinning this notion of the, the rise of the challenge from a tech issue to a business and, and a risk issue. So in many respects. Uh, or in most respects, where we are now is very much a function of, of where we started and where we thought the world was going to go. Um, the reality of it is it's just, a, it, it takes longer to evolve when, uh, when the underpinning challenge is the evolution of just a, a corporate risk issue per se, than you know, so much of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis within the security world, which is, you know, uh, uh, patches need to be deployed and people need, um, firewalls and, and so forth, which are really kind of binary point, you know, point in time issues versus just the evolution of, of, of you know, of the challenge. So there is a really, really strong analogy to that. And we've, we've succeeded every step along the way saying, okay, well, um, the, the, the bet is, is solid and the tailwinds are behind us. And here's how we're going to ever evolve and kind of tweak along the way to make sure that we're, you know, we're going to see this thing through. Going back to, to the origin story. Um, it's actually pretty, so it's pretty funny. I, my, my stint today on was, um, bifurcated in the sense that I started in 2003, um, took a break in 2008, went back to grad school. I didn't actually intend to come back to the insurance industry, but, um, with one of the it jokes sucks you in. Also, you know, it is that you just you never in. leave, right? You can't, you can't walk leave. away. You can't, yeah. you can't leave. Um, but I recognize that after spending three years and a lot of money to get, get a couple of fancy degrees that if I just went back to the job that I was left effectively, like why, why did I do it in the first place? So I, I'm going to go back, not to fall prey to that peril, but to really embrace the reality that the insurance industry does a lot of good for the world, needs fresh thinking, needs innovation, now needs to contend with this at the time, this 2011 
um, this ever so more quickly evolving and, and challenging area of, of, of cyber. So jump, jump back in, you know, squarely and, and, uh, and enthusiastically, and then started to, to, to get involved in more challenging conversations and in client needs than ever before. So to be, to give you one, one of the examples that I said all the time, which is hilarious, um, in a, in a roundabout way. So got pretty well ingrained with the energy team and I, and I'd go talk to energy companies and whatnot. The one meeting in, in particular, um, had a, had a really, really genuine conversation with the CISO of a very, very large, um, energy production in the United States. And this individual said, it, it is unquestionable in my mind that, um, that somebody can, uh, effectively attack or if they could get in, um, hack into our operational technology systems, blow this particular plant to smithereens. And then if, um, if the winds were blowing in a certain direction that day and landed a, a vapor cloud or whatnot over this neighboring town, that's probably a six to $8 billion loss because of just the damage to the assets and the facilities, all the you know, chronic uh, diseases that the people would face and everything else. Um, and that, that's what keeps me up at night. And, and I said, oh, I, I, okay, I, be, I believe you. I keep, you know, yeah. here, here's the tactic last bird and whatnot. And then I said, so what are you doing in terms of the insurance coverage for that? Which at the time was, was my job. And they said, oh, we're SOL. I mean, our, our property insurance has cyber exclusions throughout the entire thing. Is that we're going to take that hit if, if, if we have that loss. So then I said, okay, that, 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 I'm going to try to solve that for you. Um, yeah. so went, went back to, went back to the energy team at Aon and, uh, had a, had a meeting with the energy leader and I said, uh, this is what this, this here, here's, here's what, uh, happened in this meeting. So we can, we got to deal with this and he goes, what are you talking about? What? No, I mean, he, here's what the CISO said. I mean, this is, this is the event that can happen. Um, and he goes, what does it, what does it matter to me? And, and I go, well, that's, that's a property. It, well, it's, it's a property and a liability claim, but they're, they're one of their big issues is property. And this would be a $3 billion facility loss. And he says, wow, my policy replace place would cover that. Like, I'm, I'm not sure why you're worried. And I go, no, no, it doesn't. It's full of cyber exclusions. He says, no, it's not. And I said, yes, it is. And, and the, and, and the company had given me a copy of their, their, their property policy. So I had it with me and I found it. And I go, here you go. And he goes, where did that come from? Like, yes, here's the, you know, here, here's the issue. So fast forward, the point was at that time when I realized this was a real issue, just based on, and there were a couple other instances along those lines, I, 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 I just set out to talk to folks and figure out, you know, who within the cybersecurity community, technical community, um, could help uh, the insurance industry understand the issues, um, come up with a means to, to tackle it, you name it. And just by kind of sheer force of relationships and talking to folks and connecting some dots and whatnot, I met my co-founder Dave White, who, who I told you, um, Dave's, Dave's phenomenal claim to fame is that Dave wrote a cybersecurity framework called C2M2, Cybersecurity Capability Maturity Model in long form, uh, okay. shortened to, to C2M2. The, the basis of C2M2 was that prior to uh, 2008, 2009, when the U.S. and Israelis built and then dialed up the screws on the Stuxnet virus, which was the piece of malware that was designed very specifically to attack, uh, to attack Iran's uranium enrichment capabilities and actually physically destroy the centrifuges that underpinned uranium enrichment. Wow. As a result of that offensive effort, the U S department of energy and Homeland security and the department of defense asked Dave and his team at the Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute to build a cybersecurity methodology for critical infrastructure industries, initially focused on energy and electric utility that would help security leaders at energy companies better understand what the challenges were and then develop basically a better cybersecurity program in terms of technologies, processes, procedures, et cetera. So it's basically like the energy industry cybersecurity roadmap 
Yeah. And when I found my way to Dave, thanks to somebody else that was involved in Axio at the time, I thought, this is the guy. This is my partner. It, this is the guy that, that's the answer to this. And, you know, here we are, however many years later, um, you know, on the jury. Yeah. Wow. Great, great story. What great a story. what a combination of, of two two verticals coming together to create something so powerful. I think that's really, really great. We only have a minute or two left, and I don't want to let you go today without talking a little bit about Lloyd's and, and yeah. kind of kind of what all you did there. And, and in fact, you know, a lot of people believe in you, but but Lloyd's itself uh, went ahead and invested in in you as well, right? So why don't you talk to us just a little bit about about your time uh, there at Lloyd's Lab and kind of the outcome of that? Yeah, so is uh, far more quicker than uh, you know than the previous story. So you know because of just who we are, where we specialize in, the types of risks that we're we're really successful at helping companies and, and the insurance industry navigate. Um, we we were very very familiar with Lloyd's Lab, um, having friends at Lloyd's, being in the industry, you know, you name it. We applied for the spring twenty twenty three cohort on the basis that who we are, what we do, how we do it, can help Lloyd's better understand and come up with better solutions when it comes to cyber physical damage coverage. So going back to what I just said five minutes ago, the the the, the policy that fills the hole or meets the need of energy company refinery X goes boom because of a cyber event and they want coverage, that type yeah. of thing. So got accepted into the lab. Uh, created a an extension of our product that's heavily weighted towards the output the insights the reporting the visibility that we can help uh, the insurers achieve based on end users and companies starting to, to work with axio um, and as a result of that we're now in very very productive uh conversations and collaboratives uh, collaborations with various of the syndicates with uh, some of the lloyd's brokers um, to actually see this out. And, and we've got a couple live engagements that are um, uh, the evolution of, of all that. And as a result, Lloyd's um, took a chance on us, which uh, is, is one of the first two that has ever happened, I think, wow. as far as them saying what, what you've pitched to us and, and what this means to the Lloyd's market, as, as you both very much know, um, centers on them being the insurer oftentimes of the most challenging globally significant risks mm -hmm. uh, embodies just where we want to go, who we want to be, how we want to help companies tackle this. And uh, we want to put a little skin on the game and, and help, uh, you know, help, help you collaboratively within our own ecosystem, but also just help, 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 help the cyber risk world, um, you know, better, better contend with and, and tackle the challenge. So we're a couple months in, and uh, and it's been really, really uh, meaningful for us. And obviously, it, it 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 underscores going back to where we started, the belief, and certainly Lloyd's belief that there's this continual, uh, uh, increasingly smaller nexus between the cybersecurity industry and the insurance industry um, that we're proud to to really be part of and help achieve. So, did you join? For what reason did you accept the invitation into um, Lloyd's lab? I mean, I would think at your stage of development as a company, you didn't need to be incubated, uh, or or is that right. not really what la what what the lab does? No, no, no. It actually well, so uh, it's it's interesting. The, the Lloyd's labs takes all comers for what it's worth. I mean, th there's there's. Uh, early, early, early stage companies just have an idea. Uh, sometimes uh -huh. there are uh -huh. large corporates that have an idea that they just believe is applicable to the insurance industry and the Lloyd's market. And there's been instances where, uh, where they've been accepted as well. The, the whole, really the, the underlying premise of why we got, why, why we applied for it, why we got accepted, and then why we accepted the invitation is that, you know, Again, going back to what I've what I talked about a couple times, you know, th throughout today, was part of our value, and 
and, and what we can deliver to clients is an ability to achieve better and more sustainable and more worthwhile insurance outcomes for themselves and to manage their risk and recognizing that, that we, we happen to specialize more in like large energy, large infrastructure, you know, bigger and more challenging companies where there aren't really viable and meaningful or to date there have been viable and meaningful and kind of easily achievable insurance solutions out there to, to solve that need for them. Right. Well, what better place to go to than, than Lawrence? Then, then where those companies are coming for, yeah. for that kind of protection. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so it's, uh, it, it made perfect sense. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna put a pin in it here and, um, and say, thank you so much. What a fascinating, interesting company, uh, working in a fascinating. really remarkable dynamic. I mean, dynamic, the word dynamic almost doesn't do full justice to, to the world you're w working in. And we didn't even get into some of the more technical parts of, uh, of, of your product, as well as um, the technical challenges that um, exist in this world. So we're going to have to bring you back for a part two sometime. Sorry. If, 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 if this gets more than one view or, or listen to, then yeah, I'll, I'll come back for more. And the next time we'll get two. There okay. Well, we'll double it. Okay. Okay. That's, that, that's a reasonable challenge. We, I mean, we, we always like to say we have four loyal listeners. So, um, <laughs> if, if we can, I'll call them all myself to make sure that we get that. We'll get those numbers happen. skyrocketing. Yeah. So listen, Let's thank go. you so much. There, there, there we go. There we go. Thank you so much for being on Scott. I, I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Lee. Um, I, I'll happily do it anytime. I really appreciate it. That was a mind expanding episode. It was something that we don't normally talk about, but is so critical to all businesses. So uh, critical and so complicated and complex. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you think about like, just, I don't know, like a utility company, right? That has all these different things and all these different facilities and all these yeah, different everything automated. physical things, exposures, different things. How in the world do you put together the most effective program that you that you can i mean it's you, you call it's, axio. it's mind numbing yeah you call axio call you, axio you because say, they know it when 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 you don't you call or when you need a little help you call them that's right and i thought it was a great conversation great and and will hopefully lead into more conversations on cyber insurance because that is an evolving world that that we probably need to talk more about why don't you get in touch with alicia our intrepid content producer and um see if you can't influence her to do that what do you think okay i think you just did that did i saying that inadvertently so. she's literally on the call right now so. she, she she heard everything i just said yes well let me say this she's fabulous al moya our um engineer is fabulous and you are fabulous all you listeners out there um, we thank you and we hope that uh, you enjoyed today as much as we do, did. And to my co-host, Lee Boyd, meh, meh, whatever. 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 And, but nonetheless, we'll say what we say every time. Goodbye, everybody.